It is Tuesday. It's the 9th of July. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Making news today. We'll have those stories for you in just a bit. But first, today, there are fears of many casualties after a large car bomb went off in southern Beirut. Local television stations say it happened in an area considered to be under the control of the Shia militant group Hezbollah. There is no indication as yet who planted the device. Mohammed Jamjun is in Beirut, and he will be joining us on a little bit later on. On here on the show. Funerals begin today in Egypt for more than 50 people killed outside the Republican Guard headquarters on Monday. The interim government says it will investigate why the deadly shooting happened. The military says violence erupted when terrorists attacked the building. Supporters of deposed President Mohamed Morsi is following that part of the story for us. He joins us now live from Cairo with more on that. Reza. Monita, every day this conflict seems to take a new shape. Seems Monita. to. All right. Reza, thank you for that. Reza Saya there, live for us from Cairo. We're going to take you now to Beirut with more on the story that we told you about right at the top of the show and a large car bomb that went off in southern Beirut. Mohammed Jamjoun is in Beirut. He joins us now on the phone with more on any information, uh, Mohammed, as to what exactly happened today. Well, Monita, we're still getting details. We just arrived on the scene. Uh, it is one of... Uh, so, Mohammed, thank you for that. Mohammed Jamjoun there on the phone for us in uh, Beirut. And you are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong, searching for answers as families of the Asiana crash victims grieve. We'll bring you the response of the airline CEO. That's next. <laughs> We're watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. I'm Monita Rajpal. The president of Asiana Airlines has apologized to the parents of two Chinese teenagers killed in the crash landing in San Francisco over the weekend. Asiana chief Yun Yong Du bowed to family members at Seoul's airport as they made a stopover on their way to San Francisco. But for the families, the apology fell far short. Journalist Ian Lee is live for us in CNN Seoul with more on uh, what the CEO said to the families of the victims. Monita, he was apologizing profusely to the families, and this yeah, is it certainly doesn't look good, Ian, uh, for the uh, the airlines right now. But uh, and, and that said, there is one good side, one good part of the story when it comes to a flight attendant of the airline. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, the flight attendants are really being called heroes uh, in this whole incident, helping passengers to get off safely. Uh, the main flight attendant we're hearing. All right, Ian, thank you for that. Ian Lee there in Seoul. Let's uh, take a look at some of the other stories we're following for you here on the show. A flight from Moscow to Cuba should have just taken off. Reporters camped out at the airport are wondering whether Edward Snowden is on board. Fred Pleitgen joins us now live from Moscow. With more on that, Fred, do we know any more whether or not he is actually there? Well, uh, Monita, let me tell you that all eyes were on gate 22 of Sheremetyevo Airport until just a little while ago. The flight apparently right, pushed... Fred, thank you for that. Fred Pleiken there, live for us from Moscow. In George Zimmerman's murder trial, a Florida judge ruled, out, ruled on Monday that uh, jurors will be allowed to hear toxicology reports for deceased 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman's defense team argues Martin's judgment could have been affected on the night of his death last year. If marijuana was in his system, Zimmerman is charged with secondary murder in Martin's death. The three women kidnapped and held captive for years in a house in the U.S. city of Cleveland are speaking out. In a video released by their PR firm, Amanda Berry, Gina De Jesus, and Michelle Knight talk about strength and they thank the people of Cleveland and around the world for their support. Um, first and foremost, I want everyone to know how happy I am to be home with my family and my friends. It's been unbelievable. I want to thank everyone who has helped me and my family through this entire ordeal. Their accused uh, kidnapper, Ariel Castro, is in jail. Tenant will be to begin trial in August. Scientists say cities in northern China are among the most polluted in the world, and living in the north could shorten your life. A new study says life expectancy for people who live north of the Huai River is five and a half years less than in other areas. People there suffer from higher rates of stroke, heart disease, and cancer. 
A sudden massive flood brought the city of Toronto in Canada to a standstill on Monday. The water knocked out electric power to large parts of the city, leading to traffic gridlock. Commuters on this waterlogged train had to be helped out through the windows and ferried away by boat. Of course, we will have more details with, a meteorolo with our meteorologist, Samantha Moore, in just a few minutes on the conditions, weather conditions there for Ontario. Now, it's a small town in eastern Canada, not far from the U.S. border, home to just 6,000 people. But Lac Megantic has been described as looking like a war zone by Canada's prime minister after a runaway train carrying crude oil came off the rails on Saturday, causing a massive explosion. Thirteen people are known to have died. Another 37 are missing, and 1,500 people had to evacuate their homes. Today, the residents will be allowed back to see if what, if anything, is left of their lives. CNN's Paula Newton is in Lac Megantic. She joins us now live with more on the situation as it stands there today. Paula? Manita, we are expecting a police briefing shortly. We do expect to hear from them that they'll get more access to that. Right, Paula, thank you for that. Paula Newton there, live for us from Lac Megantic in Quebec. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Still to come, to CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Yesterday, we brought you the news of yet another building collapse in India that killed 13 people. Well, now critics of Indian building regulations say the recent collapses are part of a disturbing trend. Malika Kapoor tells us what the government is doing to tackle this problem. It's the final stage of packing. The shop is empty. Let's talk a little bit more about that flooding in Canada. Remember we told you about this just earlier on in the show. Well, it made for some dramatic water rescues in Toronto. Meteorologist Samantha Moore is at the World Weather Center with the details. And Samantha, I was talking to my folks in Toronto. They were talking about hours-long power outages as well. And in some crazy, crazy rain where people had to pull aside when they were driving and just stop driving for a while. Oh, incredible. In fact, Manita, we saw some month and a half worth of rain in the next uh, few days. All right, Samantha, thank you very much for that. And finally today, a sight to stop women in their tracks. Jane Austen's romantic hero, Mr. Darcy, emerging after a swim in a wet white shirt. We're watching CNN News Center. I'm Juanita Rajpal, live at CNN Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us. I'll update the news headlines in just a couple of minutes.